Good to see you all out here. What a beautiful day it is, and you look at God's people in his house, eh? It's wonderful to be here. And I just want to reinforce what Rob said about those events coming up. Uh, we've been working really hard to make sure that they're, they're quality reflections of the Christmas season. So I feel encouraged to invite your friends and neighbours as they sort of uh, as they want to understand a little bit more about Christmas and you want, to underst- you want to help them understand a little bit more about what faith in Jesus means. Well, today you're going to hear from 30, at least 30 different voices as we're going to describe to you what it is that we feel God is saying to us in this moment of time as we look forward to 2021 because 2020 was stretchy, stretchy, wasn't it? <laughs> uh, 2020 has been very, very stretchy. So this morning, as we look at what it is that we're doing in, this, in, the, in the new year, I just want to say that um, we took a huge opportunity this last few months as an eldership to stop, pause, reflect on who we are, where we've been, and where we're going. And that's been a real good use of our time over the last few months, particularly when we've been in this slowdown, lockdown period. And for us as a church, um, we're partnering with God to generously transform lives and society into the likeness of Christ in Tauranga, New Zealand, and the world. And so everything that we do, everything that we do as a church, is designed to glorify Christ. And so therefore the things that we describe to you this morning are all done with that intention, be they outward looking, building into our community, or inward discipleship, raising up a new generation of followers for Jesus. But when we look at the scriptures, we find that there's a directive that came very, very early on uh, of the, in the New Testament, in the book of Acts, uh, when Jesus said to his disciples, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. That's the mandate that hasn't changed in 2,000 years. It doesn't change, it won't change. The purpose of the church is to glorify Christ, to be his witnesses. And so quite simply, we're told that we have to know who you are and know where you're going. Is that fair enough? Know who you are and know where you are going. And so this morning, as we describe to you what it is as a church that we are going to do with our time and our resources in this next 12 months, Uh, I just need to remind you that last week we had an annual general meeting and we sat down and we talked about budgets and all of those really important things like like money. Uh, But all of that is attached, the finances are attached to the vision that all of our departments have. Okay, so our whole process of building a budget is always about building a vision first. Build the vision and allow ourselves to then uh, pay for that that vision by virtue of what it is that we can do with our resources and ensuring that our resources are well spent. So I'm going to pray, and then we're going to invite the first of our teams, some of the children's ministry teams, to come up and tell us what they're about. Um, So let's bow our heads as we prepare ourselves to hear this vision from the team. Lord, each year will be recorded for what it was that we saw as a point of difference. 2020, of course, is going to be the year COVID came. And um, for that reason, Lord, we, we're hopeful for next year, a year that will be better, not only here in New Zealand, but around the world. And so, God, as we offer you our, our time, our energy, our praise, our hopes for the future, we trust, Lord, that in this time here today, we can capture some of what it is that you're doing in and through the life of our church and all it is that we are together as we collectively serve you. So Lord, open the eyes of our understanding here today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Right, so I'm going to introduce Pastor Rob. Pastor Rob's going to introduce uh, the first group out of what we call his Generations team. So they're going to come on up. Thanks, team. team. Come on up. It's great to have them with us. Give them a round of applause. Might have to come into the light. Uh, so the Generations Department has uh, 15 different people involved with it, so we're spreading it over two different uh, spaces. Um, and so this morning, they're surrounding me. Uh, it's great to have them with us. Uh, Generations Department's uh, 
is ministering to something like five or six hundred uh, people from the age of zero right through to 25. And so we're, we're dealing with half of them this morning, this half, the first half. And who, who's starting? Susan, why don't you start? Hit me, hit me. Good morning, Fano. It's such a pleasure to be here with you this morning. Usually you won't see me here because I'm usually tucked out the back and I'm heading back there very shortly. Um, So I am responsible for the preschool ministry here at BBC, and that starts with our very new expectant mothers all the way through to the children as they leave us and head off to school and visit with Mandy. Um, So uh, it's such a pleasure because I get to go and visit new mums and their babies and spend time blessing them and giving them care gifts all the way through to our Sunday service uh, programs where we have the nurture room where Mums and dads can take their babies out and get a cup of tea made for them and things like that through to our toddler room, our preschool room, where we nurture those just beginning seeds of faith. Um, We also have our outreach, community outreaches, such as our Friday playgroups and our mainly music ministry, which is just going from strength to strength. And um, my, my passion for next year, when we were asked to share something that we're really, really excited about for next year, it's actually family ministry, and it's something that we're all, all about all together, but I'm just going to speak to it briefly. We get one hour a week with your children, and you get 168. So we just want to really sow those seeds and water them, but also sow those seeds and water them with our parents. Some of them are first-generation Christians. They didn't have that upbringing where they came through and parents said grace or parents prayed over them or blessed them or anything like that. So some of them think, I don't know what to do with this. I don't know how I should do this at home. So that's my privilege and our privilege to share some of those learnings and ideas and concepts of things that they could be doing at home just to really reinforce and build those habits that are going to stick with them for a lifetime. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so the primary primary school kids, we are focusing on connection and fun, as you can see with our lovely buzz. You're going to see a lot more of that next year um, in 2021 with a lot more connection and fun on our agenda. Um, so for us, it's about, um, in primary school room, it's about um, making sure the kids feel that they belong. This is a home for them, that they are forming deep friendships here. They can see them right through to youth, right through to year 13 and beyond. Um, We do have a lot of schools represented in the room, but what's important for me and what we keep trying to say to the children is that these are very, very unique, special friendships. These are the friendships that hopefully aren't going to change, even if they change schools. And so small groups are a huge focus for us next year, is getting small group leaders focusing on small groups and connection with the children in that time, teaching them what it looks like to, to disciple and to go out there. But before we can even do that, they've got to know who they are in Christ. So... It's all about identity again. Um, We're going to be introducing a lot more fun skits with this new curriculum that we're doing and hopefully have a lot of laughs, got a few claps there, so a lot of laughs and help them understand the scriptures through lots of skits. And as Susan mentioned, we're really excited about some intergenerational events that we have on the cards, both preschool and primary, and family uh, focus with a lot more focus on family ministry events. Um, Yeah, and we're most excited about creating a space for children to develop their own personal relationship with God. So that looks different for us every Sunday, but that is our focus, that will stay our focus, that we can help children develop their own personal relationship with God as they hear God um, and journey with God from a Monday to a Saturday and not just on a Sunday. Yeah. Brian Joe. Good morning, church. Um, We're excited about 2021 and the things that it can bring. Um, we've had an interesting year, of course, uh, but moving into 2021, we're really excited about our events. Uh, we have an event once a month for our phase kids to bring along their friends. We've had some great times this year. Um, we've had a few changes due to uh, obvious reasons, um, but we managed to bring a number of kids along, our phase kids, but also the huge number of friends. So we're getting 30 to 40% of their friends coming along to our events. And we just want to just, I don't know, continue to bring those events and just offer them the opportunity that they come along, have fun, friends, uh, food and then to hear about God in a safe and caring environment. 
And moving on from that, we really encourage um, that to come on to our phase Sundays. So our Sundays up in the phase room, we're, we're all about having, again, fun, games, um, but also equipping our kids so that they go out into their communities, go into their, their families, their schools, their communities, and knowing more about God. We like to teach God in, in, a, in an age-relevant way for them, that they learn to know how to, how to talk about Jesus in an intermediate way, um, to learn to know the Bible in an intermediate way. So that's what we're really looking forward to for next year. It's a continuation of what we're doing. Um, and as well as Sundays and events, we're very excited for uh, two big things that we can achieve with our kids together with God next year, which is eCamp. We didn't get to go this year, but we are excited to have a whole Easter weekend which is focused on Jesus. There's friends, there's crazy fun, and there is devotion after devotion, which just reminds the kids that Easter is about Jesus and helps them to make that decision for themselves. So we're excited for eCamp. And also, building on what God's done, this year we had our first um, multi-church event here at BBC where all the churches of Tauranga got together to have a wild event to bless the kids and um, help them move on in their faith and to see that this is something we're all in together. Um, it was awesome, but we know that next year can be even more awesome because God is like that. And so we're looking forward to inviting tons more kids to come to our wild event next year and see what God will do through that as well. Thanks, team. See you Great. Kids are going to go out now, so Faze and kids, head on out to your program. Let's give our kids a big clap. <laughs> Yay. <clears throat> so I'll hand over to Kyle now, who's going to introduce to you um, the vision from our, from our corporate team. Move up closer, ladies, so we can see you. Come on up. Don't Into all the be light. shy. Into the light. Good morning, everybody. Yeah, so I'm Kyle. I uh, just lead the corporate, the administrative team here at BBC. I always like to tell this team we're the backbone of, of a lot of other things that happens here. Without uh, a great building to serve in, a safe, clean building, without IT and computers, uh, without financial administration, without um, excellent management of the office, and without all of our coffee, um, a lot of other ministry wouldn't happen here. So... Um, yeah, so we're just excited to be a resource and a huge support for all the other ministry that goes on in the life of this building and this church. Um, so I'm going to pass it off to each of you if you can just introduce yourself and what you're excited about. Yes, uh, good morning. My name is Bernice Grant. Um, I'm the uh, church accountant here. So uh, the uh, AGM that we had last week was a fantastic celebration of all the financial resource. I mean, there's a lot of resource that comes, the people resource into this church. And so it's just real exciting uh, to celebrate. So celebrate that uh, across 2020 as, as a um, congregation together you gave about 2.34 million uh, into the life and the fellowship here and all of the uh, ministries that take place and it's just it wasn't it a pleasure to hear the generations team and that's where your finance is going and as the groups that follow us uh, will be sharing about um, all the ministry uh, initiatives that happen, things like 24-7, um, Kaimanga. Kaimanga raised last year $22,000 in cash um, along with some uh, government funding and that is uh, how we can bless uh, all the families in the community. So I'm really excited to be involved uh, in that work, um, bring, um, administering that with my beautiful colleague beside me as we um, uh, as it flows back out into the, all the community initiatives. Good morning, everyone. Lovely to see you. I'm Faye, and I um, support Bernice in the, as the finance um, assistant in the office, and I just look forward to being able to um, continue to support her and the team, our staff team, and all the ministries that you so graciously and generously given to each, um, each week. Thank you for that. Good morning, everybody. Some of you might be confused about who I am because Kathy and I job share. So sometimes I'm Kathy and sometimes I'm Janice, but today I'm Janice. Kathy's not here, so but we don't mind if you call us one or the other. We're happy. <laughs> and I'm sorry I'm going to have to read to you what we're planning for next year because I can't remember it and get it down concisely enough for you. So I just wanted to let you know that Kathy and I are both super excited about 2021 when we get to move into the new front office space. We so look forward to welcoming you all into this space when you either give us a call on the phone or when you pop in to see us here at BBC. And our vision is that that space will be where you feel welcome at any time and a place where you know you are valued, that you're all valued here by us here at BBC, and a place where you can talk to us about anything 
at any time and that we will listen and that we will hear you and that we will serve you in any way that we can. So we're really looking forward to that. 2021. <laughs> Hi, my name is Irene. For those of you who don't know me, I run the cafe. What excites me about 2021 <laughs> is the amazing new um, space that has been in construction out there. And it's looking great, isn't it, from the outside. So the inside's going to look even better. We're going to have shorter queues and we'll also still have our great food and coffee. But the real heart of the cafe for me is seeing the fellowship, the new connections, lots of laughter, and yes, some tears, and just having people sharing and caring for one another. So I say bring on that space. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. <clears throat> Thank you, corporate team. Thanks. Thanks all. We love you, accountants. We love you, accountants. So I'm introducing now the um, connection team. It's Michaela leading this team, so... Um, Thank you, team. Tell us what you're up to. Keep, keep up the front, guys. Don't be, don't be shy. Oh, yeah, yep. <laughs> um, a lot of my team are a bunch of introverts, so trying to get them on stage is quite hard. <laughs> Although these two aren't. But anyway, um, I head up the Connection team, and Connection is not just about Sunday mornings. Connection is also about all through the week. And not only do we have... Um, Tatiana and Monica here, but through the week we have numbers of um, groups and the vision that I want to see for next year is interest groups, people where, t um, groups where people can connect with one another on a um, different kind of level and they can be quite neat outreach groups as well. The other thing we have that I'm really excited about is we now have a prayer advisory team and we are going to see more prayer events and help us all learn to pray everywhere. I'm really happy about that. This is Tatiana. Would you like to share what you're excited about? Good morning, church. Um, two things I'm looking after. Not two things, but the main things is hospitality and the next steps uh, process here at church. So uh, hospitality. Our goal is to be a warm and welcoming church um, and show hospitality to everyone like no other. Um, create a sense of belonging where every visitor, member, and guest can feel uh, comfortable to come here, to be open to worship, and to hear the God's word. And um, in regards to hospitality volunteers, uh, my aim, and I'm very excited uh, that I'm planning um, to provide our amazing volunteers with all the tools and training they need to uh, for them uh, to execute their roles with confidence and excellence. Uh, and in terms of next steps process, you know, next steps is moving forward, and you'll see this, you know, uh, things tucked in and connect cards in your seats, and next steps, they're all going to me. So if I'm sending you, like, emails, you will know that it's actually this, this lady sending you the spams. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we plan to design a simple next steps process for new people to get connected with God here, to get connected uh, with everyone and feels like it's family church for them. And um, yeah, we're excited and passionate about with other staff members uh, from different ministries creating events and spaces, uh, events like Dinner for Eight, uh, Barbecue for 20, uh, that everybody can be plugged in uh, in the church smoothly. And uh, we also have lots of volunteer opportunities to help people to get connected in live groups as well. And I've got a live groups boss here next to me. <laughs> Speaking of live groups. Hey, life is better connected. And at BBC, one of the best ways to experience community, purpose, connectedness, um, is to get into a life group. And so we are real excited about that. And one of the most important reasons to get into a life group is that it's where you get to experience and grow um, and know God in a deeper and a more intimate way. So we're excited for the vision for 2021 for life groups. Rob, Stacy, and I had the opportunity to collaborate with Craig as we prayed, sought God, brainstormed for exciting new sermon-based content for 2021. So we're super excited about that. So I would encourage you, all of you, to either 
and one of our vision is to either um, to get amongst it, to either be in one or leading a life group. And we're excited for 2021 to see what God is going to be doing in and amongst your life groups as he's going to grow you and stretchy, stretchy you in 2021. And that's not a prophecy. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. So the other hat <laughs> it is not a prophecy. The other hat that I wear is serious coffee. Serious Coffee, yes, come on girls, is our women's ministry here and we are passionate about inviting women of all ages and stages to come, rest, worship, learn and study and be as we celebrate the power and greatness of Jesus. And we're excited about what we're gonna do for 2021 but I usually do the big reveal in 2021 uh, and tell you what we're gonna do for the following year. But let me just say, it's gonna be so, so good. You're gonna love it. You're gonna love what we've got planned for you. So shout out to all the girls in the house. Grab your Bibles, invite a friend, and come and get a Monk Series coffee and get ready, get ready, get ready for what God has for you in 2021. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't she gorgeous? <laughs> Not only that, everyone, but we are so looking forward to more discipleship and leadership training. Um, so watch this space because next year is going to be a fun year to be able to lead others in, in discipleship and leadership. Cool. Thanks. Thanks so much, ladies. <clears throat> All right. Now I'm going to invite the um, creative arts team. Clint leads that team. And uh, we've got... Um, these are the guys. You've got to move forward on stage, fellas. I know you love sort of lurking in the darkness. That's sort of... Uh, that's sort of what these guys do, oh, apart from Darren, of course, he's always up front, but Clint, let it rip, mate. Tell us what's happening. Good morning, BBC. Uh, my name is Clint Harris. Super excited to be a part of the life of BBC and especially uh, growing the creativity that's here uh, at BBC. And I'll quickly introduce you to the team. This is Logan Davies. Davy, he's just come on to team for production. Uh, Ben's a shy sort, so um, Ben has sent his head along it's this Ben's morning. It's wife's. Ben's wife's birthday today. Yeah, it is his birthday. Yeah, so, so he's, he's got three boys under the age make of four. It. And then Charles and Darren. So um, they actually all wanted just their heads to come up, but we decided we'd get some live guys out here. So um, this morning, I'm just going to quickly, Charles going to probably not talk, but I'll quickly get um, Logan just to talk to what he's doing this morning. Okay, so this year in terms of production has been a great year. We've grown incredibly in terms of our online live streaming. We've got a lot of people there, so hi to everyone online today. Uh, but this coming year, we've also got a lot going on. We're going to be growing the teams a lot more and also working around the building projects. Oh, kia ora, everyone. I uh, just want to start by saying uh, God is worthy of our worship, yeah? Yep. Yeah, he is, totally. And here at Bethlehem Baptist, we hold the value of worship, uh, musical worship in particular, uh, really highly. Um, I believe uh, that we've gone from strength to strength as a music community, um, and in the coming year, we want to press even deeper into what it means to worship God in spirit and in truth. We're planning leadership development training for our music community. We're growing our teams, um, pr uh, putting um, time and effort into training up and, and building up people's talents and gifts, creating opportunities for new additions to our community, and we are also wanting to explore songwriting, recording, and producing in this coming year. So let's get excited about 2021 and keep pressing into the plan that God has for us. Woohoo! Thank you, Darren. Shao, has got something to say? I don't know. So I decided to say something. Yeah. <laughs> Since, um, yeah, Ben and I are involved with, we can basically sum up what we do as communication in the place. So we, uh, we're really excited about all these ideas we're hearing this morning from everybody, from all the teams. Um, because next year, that is what we'll be working on, is to put a nice little BBC spin on it to communicate to you guys what's coming up because we do all, all the graphics around here, all the video work, all the photo work. So we're really for looking forward to that, and I'm excited for what God has in store for 2021. And I'll, I'll talk on behalf of Ben. A little project that Ben's been working on is a, a site called Prolific. And basically, it's prolific is uh, a site that is resourcing not just us as a church, but also resourcing other churches. He's really passionate about this, and uh, it's basically sharing everything that we create here, being able to send it out or give it to other churches to use in the life of their churches as well. So it's, Ben, I know, is super excited about that. Um, I'm glad Easter was um, brought up this morning. I'm really looking forward to Easter. One of my passions uh, is art installations. 
And I'm really looking forward to the idea of how we could take Easter, the message of Easter, to our community uh, through arts uh, and installs that are, are provoking and allow them to engage with the beautiful message of Easter. So creativity here at BBC is um, something we're all excited about and we hope you'll get excited about it as well. Kia ora. Fantastic. Could you just have a quick word to Ben about wearing a hat on stage? We don't want him to. <laughs> oh. Yeah, that's good. Let's give him a hand. <clears throat> okay, so here we have Michaela back up here again in a different configuration with um, the cause looking outside of ourselves. So, yeah, um, so we call it you. Beyond BBC and often you'll know it as mission or initiatives. So I'm going to let the team explain this. Great. Hi, I'm Debbie. I'm part of Global Missions. So Global Missions for BBC is stuff that's outside of Tauranga. So when I think about 2021 and Global Missions... First thing that comes to mind is COVID. But the second thing that comes to my mind is the opportunities that COVID has presented us with. So since we have hit the pause button on heading overseas, I want to make the most of 2021 and spend some time training and equipping people so that when we can do mission outside of Tauranga and New Zealand, and New Zealand we can actually jump in ready to go and well prepared for what God has in store for us. And the other unique opportunity I see next year is BBC have all but one of our long-term missionaries stuck here in New Zealand. So I want to take this opportunity to spend time building a real strong sense of community amongst our missionaries, encouraging them, supporting them, blessing them, so that we can walk alongside them as they journey through this, what next season might look like for each of them. So, unique opportunities. Thanks, Debbie. Hello, once again, this time I'm Janice from Tallulah, <laughs> go, uh, co-managed with, with Deb. And once again, I'm going to read to you, I'm sorry. Um, but when we were asked to talk about our vision for 2021, Deb and I came up with some... Um, little paragraphs that describe what it is that we're looking forward to. So um, Tallulah's mission and our tagline for 2021 is bridging the way from BBC to the local community, one coat hanger at a time. <laughs> <laughs> Whilst one of our primary roles is to generate income for BBC local missions, in particular children and youth in our community through the 24-7 programme and Live For More, we also see Tallulah of staff and that's staff and volunteer be a light beaming out from BBC into our local community, taking BBC directly out into those of the, the lives of those living in our immediate community. So that's our mission and our vision, which is where we're going for 2021. Our, the Tallulah tagline is love in action in the community. And a Tallulah community for us is, a, is where staff, volunteers and customers from the local community know Tallulah is a safe place to be. It's a place to spend time interacting with others. We support ranging from friendship, prayer, kaimanga, conversation and relationship is one of our primary roles and purposes. And so when we're um, asked as to what we're excited about in 2021 and what is our vision for 2021, it is in the hope that with your continued support by donating all your unwanted clothing to us, um, that we will be able to continue to sow into the lives of the young people um, where the money goes from Tallulah, and that we can all, as a congregation, be part of God's light in some of the darkest places in our community where young people so desperately need more than what they are sometimes getting. Thank you. <laughs> Janice. You've just said all that I was going to say. <laughs> so, um, yes, Tallulah is definitely a place where women come uh, for just encouragement. And we did notice through the Sunsettling Year that many did come for conversation and kindness and, and just that little bit of hope that we could offer them. And so next year we want to continue to develop a, that warm and welcoming environment and uh, build a, a really strong team of volunteers. We already have a great team. And uh, just to uh, bless our customers who so generously donate and buy 
to support our cause. And so really a big thank you to all of you wonderful people who donate so generously. We couldn't do it without you and um, we so appreciate it. And the business is just growing and so we help more and more. So please keep donating. We love you to do that. <laughs> Hi, um, I got told off not saying my name last time, so my, my name is Brian. Um, I'm now, after a wardrobe change, here to represent 24-7. So I guess um, this is a result of what the incredible work that Sue Lilitha does. Um, so I actually get first hand to go into schools, along with Sophie Paul, who goes into Bethlehem College. I'm actually involved in Automata Intermedia as a, as a youth worker. So I get to work first hand with kids who have got various backgrounds, um, some pretty tough. Um, uh, I really enjoy, it's incredible to actually go and work as a Christian in a secular school. Um, I'm not able to say much about God. I can talk if they ask questions, but just actually be the hands and feet of Jesus, just, actually, just to love on the kids, just to support them, um, to run a program, to, to actually just, just surround them in care. Um, the vision I have for 24-7, we've seen uh, Sophie go into Bethlehem College in terms three and four this year. Um, she's returning next year into BC. I'm going to back into Otomoto, but I would love to see more youth workers in those schools. But I would even more greater. My vision is to see uh, every school in Tauranga and intermediates in college be involved with 24/7 with other churches as well. Um, if you want to know more, 24/7 is massive in Christchurch. I think every single intermediate and college in Christchurch has 24/7 in the school. Um, it's a collaboration between the church and the school, so it's incredible. But I really want to thank um, Tallulah for the support they offer financially and prayerfully into the 24-7 program. Um, it's an incredible ministry that BBC offers. Thank you. Um, kia ora, my name's Brittany, and I work with local initiatives, um, which is local missions, uh, basically here in Tauranga. Um, so my role is working on building relationships with various groups, individuals, and organizations within our community and Tauranga to see how, as a church community, we can partner with them. Um, by meeting their needs first and then being able to share the love of Jesus with them. Um, this year we've done that through the likes of Kaimanga. Obviously um, we've heard a lot about that this year as we've seen a huge increase in needs um, and God has just opened up doors in ways that we would never have anticipated um, through that and also through our local um, hawara, the Ngāti Kahu hawara and the Te Wharekura um, High School. Um, and so, yeah, I'm always, I shouldn't be, but I am always blown away by what God does um, with our community and how our church is able to partner with these people. So I'm really, really excited and undoubtedly will be blown away again by what God does in 2021. Great. Thank you, team. Okay, I just want to invite up um, the older part of our generations group. There's Rob and Dan in Brittany. Two, two, there we go. I don't know about older. We are older, but uh, I'm representing Encore today. But um, I'm, I'm letting this team take the take take the the stage. Um, Dan represents six different individuals that have been involved with uh, youth ministry there. So I'll let them carry on. Kia ora, kia ora tafano, ko Daniel Tuku Ingoa, uh, he me minataya rangi aho. Um, on behalf of Michael and Hannah and the rest of the youth team, I'm, I'm sharing with you about youth today. Uh, people like to talk about youth ministry as the church of the future. I humbly disagree, it's the church of today. Um, the youth ministry here is faith in action and is alive and well. It's moving and we're seeing teens changed, uh, transformed into the likeness of Christ by the Holy Spirit each and every day. Um, this year alone, we went out on, we went to go on mission. We had 28 people sign up to go on mission. Next year, we're looking to do two missions. Wherever those borders may be, we will be there. Um, outreach, we've been sending teams to bless other churches in the area with worship. And next year, we've got um, more churches asking, begging us to come and help them with their youth ministries and their worship. Um, as far as evangelism, we had over 100 new people come through the youth ministry last year, and that was a year where we were only on site for less than half of the time we had available, so that's amazing. So next year, we're going to be pressing into evangelism as well. Um, in our discipleship program, we have over 40 amazing youth leaders who dedicate their time each and every week to discipling these teenagers, and so we're going to keep pushing in with that. We actually have a volunteer team of over 80 people who help us run 
Wednesdays. So that's what we are doing here in Mission uh, in, in BBY. Uh, baptisms this year, we had over 12 people getting baptized, and next year we're going to see even more. Michael has programmed into the, the service that uh, every term there's going to be a dedicated baptism service because we believe in baptism. We want to see teens transformed. So youth ministry next year, we're kicking the doors wide open. We're going to see more people saved, more people transformed, and the future of New Zealand saved through these people. Amen? Yeah, good. Brittany, my other hat, young adults. Um, this is a um, cool one. It's a new role for BBC. Um, and we have just such an awesome young adults community um, here at BBC. And we gather together pretty much all year through various events, life groups, and then we run a program throughout the summer. Um, our hope is that our young adults will be developed as leaders, be mentored, hopefully by you guys, uh, create friendships as they learn and grow in God and um, participate in areas of BBC and our community that they are passionate about. Um, our hope as well is that next year we'll be able to run a conference um, to encourage and, and support our own young people, but also to be able to support a lot of our other smaller churches within our wider area that just might need a bit of encouragement in that space as well. So, yeah, very cool. Encore. Uh, this is this is Les and Diane and Bob trying to work out what they're putting on Instagram today. No, uh, <laughs> trying, <laughs> I love Encore. Uh, that, true, they, they they're into their technology. Look, he's even got an iPhone. Uh, so Encore uh, meets on the first and third Tuesdays of the month. <laughs> Allison's all about it, um, and uh, they've done an amazing job throughout this year. And they have uh, regular times of uh, input from different people from all around the community. It's a great opportunity for those in the 60-plus demographic to come and uh, be involved. One of the things, one of the stories that has emerged out of this year is during COVID, um, I heard of a lady who wasn't able to leave her home since March, and she's still there uh, over at Bob Owens. And uh, we, we would really love to be able to... Um, get into some of our, uh, our local community homes uh, around here, our rest homes, our, our um, homes, uh, uh, Bowens and Bethlehem Shores, which is nearby. Um, so for us, reaching out into the community is, is a big one. I know it's on Les and Diane's heart. So uh, this year, that's one of our big, uh, big hopes for them. So Encore, yep, onto it. Bless you. Fantastic. Actually, um, Bob's actually saying there in that picture that he's saying, look what my kids bought me. They bought me a glass-plated chopping board. It's, uh, I wonder how it works. Anyway, I don't think Bob's here, thankfully. Right, so um, move on to our next, uh, our next area and just invite our care team to come on up. Come on up close to me, Bev. Let's give these guys a warm welcome. Now, um, I'm stepping in here for Pastor Eric. Eric's in Dunedin today with Karen, his wife, as they celebrate uh, a long journey of, um, <clears throat> of study for their daughter, Amy, who's graduating as a medical doctor this weekend, which is fantastic, isn't it? So Eric's uh, down there. So I get a chance to sort of uh, introduce these folks. Now, Bev, uh, is, well, you, Bev, I'm not going to tell you what you do. You tell us what you do, Bev. Thank you. Hi. Um, I coordinate the Alongsider team. So our vision for the Alongsider team this year is to be able to support our church family with an empathetic listening ear, with prayer and with practical support when challenging situations arise. For lots of different reasons, we can find ourselves being unwell, feeling stressed, isolated and lonely, or just needing a listening ear, a sounding board, a prayer partner, or someone that you can just hug. Our aim is to bring reassurance, comfort and wisdom into what could otherwise be an overwhelming and stressful time. So our vision for next year is to stretch our borders and to get the team working at full capacity and making them more accessible to you. Great. Thank you. Kathy. Tina Kutong. My name's Kathy King, and I'm the manager of, of Place of Hope Counselling. A fairly recent ministry of Bethlehem Baptist Church is Place of Hope Te Wahi Tu Manako Counselling Centre. We welcome inquiries from anybody in Tauranga Moana that's wanting professional counselling. Based on the kaupapa of Christian caring, our desire is to bring healing to those who seek it through therapeutic conversations in a confidential, safe environment. We have a vision to see lives transformed and relationships restored. Looking toward 2021, our goals are 
to double the number of people that we see at Place of Hope Counselling. And we wish to increase the number of people that we see that due to a variety of barriers would not normally access, access or receive counselling. I know that counselling can often bring profound effects and changes into people's lives. And I sincerely believe that our ministry, Place of Hope, is sometimes bringing God into people's lives. And we pray for God's wisdom and discernment, and we ask you to pray for us as well over our decision-making for Place of Hope next year and that our team of counsellors, admin staff and others are blessed in our work in this ministry. Thanks, Kathy. <laughs> Sam. Hello. Uh, my name's Sam Cahill. I'm part of the marriage team here with a few other couples. Um, who, who loves having a great, awesome marriage? I see some. That's great. Good show of hands, <laughs> nodding heads. That's what we want to see. So, um, and, and why? Why do we want to have such an awesome marriage? Because when marriages are good, everything benefits. Hey? We've got um, family life is better. Um, kids are happier, doing better at school. I'm sure even the pet dog's happier. So um, we just, that's something that we want to really see and um, aim for. So... Um, whether you're thinking of getting married or you've been married for a year or maybe you've done the distance and you're a veteran, um, you can always invest in your marriage. So watch this space because next year we've got some cool stuff coming up. We've got um, events and courses starting from February and um, that includes, um, wait for it, a special retreat marriage weekend. So how about that? So it's, watch this space. It's going to be good. Over to you, Royce. Thanks, Sam. That's awesome. Okay, um, my name is Royce. Um, I'm excited to be here because, and I'm excited to be last, actually for the whole morning, I think, because I want you to remember about uh, Alpha. Um, Alpha is pretty exciting because, um, well, Alpha is a chance for us to to basically bring people in our life along um, to the Alpha course and to have them. Um, ask the questions of life. And um, who here um, knows someone who doesn't know Jesus Christ? Hands up. Um, keep your hands up if you would like those people to have an amazing relationship with Jesus. Yeah, that's awesome. So that's great. So we have a whole lot of people who will be inviting um, people to Alpha next year. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's awesome. Now, so next year, um, in term two, we're going to have a full 10 week course. It's going to be amazing because um, Alpha, there's great food, there's great desserts. Um, it's a really non, um, it's an informal and friendly way of discussing the questions of life and introducing people to what Christianity is and ultimately introducing them to the, the, the wonderful heart of Jesus. And um, I've seen amazing things happen. I've seen people um, healed at Alpha. I've seen people come to discover Jesus and their whole lives have been changed and it's really exciting. Um, I mean, what, what is more exciting than that? Seeing people uh, coming to Alpha, um, sometimes from destructive uh, lifestyles, sometimes just from just lifestyles of quiet desperation, but they come to Alpha, they discover Jesus, and their whole life has changed, and then that has a flow-on effect to those around them. So I'm really excited about that, and I want to get as many people behind it as possible. Um, we're going to do prayer, walk, uh, prayer walks, we're going to um, have invitations, we're going to promote it quite heavily. So watch the space. Please be prayerful about who you might invite um, and keep that in mind for Term 2 next year. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everybody. Cool. Yeah, we're looking at a really big push for Alpha, so we're preparing ourselves over the first term. And uh, after Easter, we'll be hitting it up and uh, get really excited about what God can do there. Kyle is going to tell us a little bit uh, about our building project. So thanks, Kyle. Yeah. So you guys see what's going on. Isn't it awesome to see Still that building me. going up and some siding on it and uh, a roof and some windows going on. And so pretty soon they'll be done with the outside and moving on to work on the inside of stage one. So just a reminder uh, for those 
uh, of you um, that ha either haven't heard or haven't heard for a while. Stage one is brand new office building. Um, we are going to renovate the entire cafe. The cafe is going to double in size. Uh, Irene mentioned that there will be a new servery with two queues, so lines will be faster. There will be a lot more seating. We're going to have a new reception area, a new stairwell to our upstairs offices. Also in this stage, we're going to renovate the foyer here, the main foyer. Um, so we'll have all new flooring, walls, um, design elements on the ceiling. So it's going to look really, really great. And just a, a quick thank you to those interior designers that have been helping me make some decisions around all this stuff. Um, so yeah, everybody's asking, when is this going to be done? We hope stage one is done in February. So just three months away or so, we hope stage one is complete. Um, I didn't mention another part of that stage is also just going to be renovating the upstairs offices there, the mezzanine suite as well. Um, we've recently made the decision, and we talked about this at the AGM, um, we're going to move right into the chapel. Um, so for a while there, we had talked about stage two, which is covering our courtyard and a new kitchen and some things over in the kids area. But we've made the decision because the builders are already over on that side of, of the space and financially and some other things, it just makes sense to move right into the chapel build. So the chapel will basically be in the, uh, the front there, that other portico that some of you come in. There's some architectural design for it and some 3D um, pictures of the chapel. It's gonna be a beautiful space. Um, if we look at the next picture, you can just get a sense of some interior design, a modern yet traditional feel with some really good um, elements in that for this chapel. So we're super excited to uh, move from stage one into the chapel. Uh, my prayer and my goal is that when stage one finishes in February, we can move right into this chapel build in March or April and have that finished in three to four months. So the big audacious goal with that is we need to raise some money to move into stage two. So it's about $750,000. Many of you have contributed so much already, so thank you for that. If you wanna be a partner in this building project and you haven't pledged money, they have pledge cards out at the welcome booth. We'd love to have you contribute towards, um, yeah, this building project. So, yeah. Thank you. Mm. Well, thanks, Kyle. You've done a fantastic job uh, leading us through that project. So um, for me, looking at the team and what it is that they're doing, um, all of this is really exciting. And for my, my responsibility as a key leader in the church is to undergird everything with scripture and preaching. And so it's a big responsibility that I know I carry in respect to this. And uh, I've been working through with uh, Rob and Monica in recent times what it is that we can be looking at next year. And so we always do a, a summer series. We call it a summer series. And uh, this year, our summer series is called um, Crazy Makers. Okay, what is it that drives Christians crazy? Okay, so we're going to be looking at some of the essentially weird theology that floats around our circles a little bit from time to time, or not even from time to time. Maybe it's really dominant. Uh, and we're going to look at what it is that drives um, us crazy in respect to our faith. And uh, so it's going to be a good look at that. And then after, after the long weekends, which we have a series of long weekends, um, we're going to be looking at, at the holiness of God, the holiness of God, okay? And uh, I think you'll be uh, astounded and captivated afresh at the, the, the great I am, the goodness of God, the power of God, the otherness of God. Um, I'm really excited about this because I, I believe it takes us from a place of, uh, well, we can become very casual about our relationship with God, but let's be reminded that he is the God, the creator of all. And uh, I'm really excited about that. Um, we'll do Easter at Easter, um, which is good. And then um, after, <clears throat> after that, I'm doing a series look, looking at Christian leadership. What is it that we can take from Scripture? And what is it that we can learn about being a leader in our community? And what does it mean to lead within our household, lead ourselves, our community, and wherever we might be placed? And that is going to be coordinated in such a way that uh, our, our study, our life group studies will go out in a normal fashion to any of those groups that are using them. Uh, but on a Monday night, we're going to hold down here a debriefing of what the topics are from that previous Sunday. So um, we're excited about that because we want to be very intentional about raising up and encouraging leadership amongst our own church 
in respect to all ages being influential wherever they might be. And so as we know, we have huge examples of what leadership is and isn't, what's best practice and what's poor practice from within the scriptures. So I'm very, very excited about that. Well, I'm going to call our band on now and um, our worship team as they um, lead us in a final song. But today has been a day where I hope we've been able to open a few windows for you to be able to peek inside the life of this this organization that we're involved with called Bethlehem Baptist Church. Uh, As you can see, there's a huge amount going on, and we've only been able to scrape the surface with what it is that we've described to you today. But uh, this is your church. These are your people. These are people who are working tirelessly to help make Jesus known within our community. And I encourage you to get involved with anything that might have just piqued your curiosity today. Uh, Anything that might have just had a little prompting and you thought to yourself, hey, that could be a bit of me, or I could be really uh, um, be used well in this area or that area. It's always about people. It's always about people being engaged with other people. And uh, we do everything that we can uh, to support those who are involved in this whole area of uh, ministry. Uh, one of the things that uh, is, in our, is in our overall plan and program as a church is to create the best place in Tauranga to, to work or to volunteer to work or to volunteer. We want to be able to serve you and the responsibility that I have and the rest of our team have is to make your experience of serving the best that we can possibly make it. To use your time well, to use your time effectively, to draw upon your skills and your experiences to ensure that what it is that we do in service for the Lord is the best that we can bring. So let me pray. Lord, for all that we've spoken about today, It is all for your glory. Every word, every bit of energy, every idea. And we thank you for that, Lord, because this is your church and you are the Lord of this church. And Father, we thank you for all that has gone in the past, the years that have gone by, and we thank you for all that has been laid down here as a foundation, a witness to you. And we pray that as we look over the fence into 2021, that we can just have a a wonderfully prosperous and fruitful time where we can stand here in 12 months' time and just stand in awe of you. And each one of us, Lord, is invited to that journey. Each one of us is invited to participate. And so we pray, Lord, that collectively, together, as a church, we can run, run, run with enthusiasm, run with energy, and allow our lives to be used well for the purposes of your kingdom. And so we submit ourselves to you, Lord. We commit ourselves to your purpose to go into all the world taking the gospel. And we ask for your blessing and your strength in all these things. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Thank you, team.